Mash Y to mirror immediately, or menu to the mirror if you haven't done so already. The camera is already on a good quick warp pixel upon exiting the dungeon, so you will save those frames. Out of the warp, hold angle down right and menu to flute. Out of the menu, continue holding angle down right while calling the bird. Once you clear the top of the wall, dash right, killing the guard. Then walk back left to get picked up by the bird. Now you can elect to dash left to save a few frames, but this can be very risky as you can often miss the bird. Choose location four. After landing, hold angle down left until you clear the bottom row of bushes. Hold left until you are lined up with the middle row of bushes, and then start your dash and turn up. After Link dashes off the ledge and lands, take a short step up and then hold angle up right. Use Y to call the bird holding the same angle input until you are clear of the tree line on the upper left. Calling the bird at this moment before screen transitioning will set your altitude variable, which sets up the spooky glitch for the first room in Ice Palace. Hold up to transition to the next screen. Hold angle up left until you clear the sign, and then hold up until you are just above the tree line. Start your dash and turn left, canceling your dash with an up input when Link is just past the second tree indentation on the bottom. Dash up. Just be aware you can get frame ruled by the guard and get hit out of your dash. You can dash further to the right to help avoid the guard if you wish. Once you reach the entrance of the bridge, optionally menu buffer to mirror. The reason I like the menu buffer to mirror here is because it makes it a little easier to set up the quick warp for the bridge. Coming out of the menu, you want to move Link one or two pixels away from the wall to the left for a successful quick warp. After coming out of the warp, hold down to move down at least one pixel, then start a dash and turn right. You want to dash on the lower half of the grass tile because cutting the grass as you dash through it reduces lag by about 15 frames. Don't move too far down though or you will get the lag and the snapdragon can knock you out of your dash. Cancel your dash at the fence with a down input and move down until you are below the fence then start a dash. If the moblin throws a spear at you, turn left while your dash is charging to block it and then turn back right. Hold up out of the screen transition and dash. You can't start your dash facing right because you will pick up the sign. Hold right out of the screen transition and dash. Alternatively, you can hold up and dash right, but then you run the risk of grabbing the ledge before dashing. Cancel this dash with an up input and re-dash just past the corner of the slope. Cancel your dash right at the rock. You want to dash up far enough so you can see the top row of bushes. You may encounter RNGs with the Moblins where it makes sense to cancel the dash earlier just to make sure that you avoid them. Walk right until you are aligned with the grid in between the two patches of grass and then start a dash and turn up. Hold up and cancel this dash with an up left or an up right input, whichever feels more comfortable. Grab the rock and pump right against the mountain as you move up. Hold up through the screen transition and throw the rock at the Ropa. Now you can throw the rock quite early toward the end of the screen transition. By throwing the rock early, you avoid the slower movement from Link holding the object. But if you happen to throw the rock too early within the transition, the rock will immediately break. Move up past the mountain slope corner, start your dash, and then turn right. Walk straight right past the first ropa, and then hold angle down right until you clear the tree. If this first ropa has a high jump pattern, you have to adjust your movement up to make sure that you avoid it. Start your dash and pray for good RNG. The ropa here can hit you out of your dash with bad RNG. It can also clip you into the mountain below. The best way to increase your chances of not getting hit is to avoid nudging the tree as you dash to the right. Cancel your dash with an up input when you are aligned with the corner of the mountain. Walk up, grab the rock, and hold up as you throw it. Then start a dash up. This dash only saves about five frames versus walking. Cancel with a right input at the slope and dash to the next screen. The safe strategy to avoid the possibility of getting hit by the Ropa is to dash through the top row of bushes. On average, this loses about 40 frames, but also saves you the possibility of losing two hearts. Dash right and cancel with a down input when you get to the corner of the mountain sticking out. On a side note, if you see the Octo has a short movement toward the right side and then moves up, you can extend your dash further to the right to safely dash down. Dash down and cancel with a down right input as soon as you clear the corner, then slide right until you are aligned with the mountain. Pick up the rock, hold down, and throw it as soon as possible. 
Walk down below the corner of the slope, start a dash, and then turn right. Cancel your dash with an up input once you clear the mountain ledge on the left. Dash up to the next screen. Hold up until you clear the mountain slope, start a dash, and then turn left. Hold left as you dash, and then cancel with an angle up left input once you clear the top of the slope. If you took damage, this bush has a 50% chance to drop a heart, and Link also happens to move very quickly while carrying it. This is a good spot to check your health, as you want sword beams if possible for the optimal strat in the second room of the dungeon. Continue holding up left along the bush, and once you reach the edge, tap A to quick hop off. Hold up during the ledge hop and take a step up, then switch to angle up left to align yourself with the bush. For the early catfish rock throw, if you throw a rock or a bush within a specific range of pixels outside of the catfish circle, you are able to still spawn it and save quite a bit of time. Once Link is directly above the flower and aligned with the top, move left towards the skull rock. Lift the rock with an angle up left input to slide Link up a pixel. Continue to hold angle up left as you carry the rock. The valid range of X coordinates for the throw is EAE through EB2, and the valid range of Y coordinates for the throw is 2BF through 2C7. So it's quite a big range of pixels. Throw the rock left, start a dash, and turn right to bonk into the mountain. This will interrupt the cutscene and force the camera to lock in a good quick warp position. This comparison shows the differences between the quick fish strat on the left and the normal strat on the right. Quick fish can roughly be 20 to 30 frames faster, but is very punishing if you miss since you'll have to walk back and grab the bush to throw instead of the rock. For the standard catfish throw, move left when you clear the top of the skull rock and face down to grab it from the top left. Grabbing this rock from the top left side reduces movement while carrying an object. After picking up the rock, walk angle up left into a position to throw the rock. Hold up during the cutscene and mash L and R to cancel the text box. Move up until the top of Link's hat is just about to cross into the deep water and catch the quake medallion. Mash L, R, and Y to cancel the text box and mirror to the light world. If you warp lower, you will nudge on the next screen and if you go higher, you will lose movement by dashing into the shallow water. The white rock on this screen has a 50% chance to drop a heart if you still need one. After the warp, start a dash and then begin holding right to cancel with angle upright when you get to the corner of the mountain. Turn up and dash. Try to cancel this dash up and left before entering Zora's domain. Dashing into a mosaic transition will cause additional lag but if you cancel too early, that time save won't matter. The reason you want to enter as far left as possible is that you exit Zora's domain on the same pixel that you entered it. So transitioning from further left will save movement on the return trip. Dash up until the tip of Link's sword is about to touch the darker part of the deep water. Cancel with a right input and re-dash. When the handle of Link's sword touches the deep water, cancel with an up input. Move up until you clear the corner of the deep water and hold angle upright until you are aligned with the right part of the shallow water. Dash up until Link is in the middle of the shallow water going up left. Cancel your dash with a left input to face left and move angle up left until Link's hat is even with the bottom of the small bubbles. Dash left until Link is completely past the point where the bottom of the shallow water starts going horizontal. Cancel with an up input and dash up. Cancel this dash with a right input when the tip of Link's sword is about to touch the shadow cast by the tree line and dash right. Cancel this dash with a down input when Link's sword is inside the bush and dash down. Cancel right when you are aligned with the bottom of the shallow water and dash right. Cancel down when the puddle around Link reaches the edge of the shallow water. Move down until Link's puddle is covering the first two dark bubbles and the lighter one below it and dash right. Cancel up as soon as the tip of Link's sword touches the dark water and start walking up. Optionally, you can pump to the right. Move up until Link is aligned with the corner of the slope and dash turn to the right. Cancel up when you are aligned with the middle bubble and dash up to King Zora. Mash all four face buttons until he spits out the flippers. Then hold down while mashing L and R. Dash down until Link hits the water. As you hold down, you can either mash A or you can do a combination of A and B or A and Y while holding down to swim off the ledge, then repeat for the next section. Walk down until Link's puddle is even with the top of the bottom bubble and dash left. 
Cancel up left when Link's sword is just about to touch the edge of the shallow water. Move up until Link is even with the shallow water and dash left. Cancel down when the top of Link's hat is aligned with the larger bubble and dash down out of Zora's domain. As a reminder, when you exit Zora's domain, you will exit on the next screen where you entered previously. Walk down and begin moving angle down left when you are even with the corner of the water where the deep and shallow meet. Dash down when you are far enough past the corner of the mountain slope below you. When Link's shadow is touching the mountain shadow, menu buffer to fire rod. This will help to avoid getting stuck on the rock and give you time to read the Zora and Crab RNG. Hold left out of the menu and start to mash A and B when you get into the water. Then begin moving down left briefly when you are even with the rock. You want to use this downward momentum to move you toward the portal so you can enter while holding up left, which is the direction you will be moving on the next screen. Aim for the top right corner of the whirlpool. With good RNG, the Zora is on the bottom right. It looks like he's blocking the path, but he actually isn't, and you can swim right above him and do the rest of the screen as normal. There are a few bad RNGs where the Zora is slightly up and to the right from the portal. You will need to fire rod him and then continue as normal. If you have to fire rod the Zora, make sure that you stay aware of your magic use because you will be short one magic pot. Another bad RNG is where the Zora is under the rock. You can actually just walk toward him and slash. You should have up left momentum and exit the portal on the left side. Hold up and left until you hit the shallow water. Walk up until you are on a straight angle from the bubble to the ladder and move angle up right. Double pump the ladder, grab the rock from below, throw it, and make sure to enter the portal from the left side for a free quick warp. Hold angle up right to enter the dungeon. Hold angle up left and fire rod as you pass the freezer above. Calling the bird earlier in this segment sets up the altitude variable such that the area of effect damage of the fire rod will connect as soon as the freezer spawns, saving a few frames. Nudge the statue as you move up and then move left when you are even with the door. Walk left onto the ice, then face down to start gaining downward momentum. This helps in case the bottom jelly has down RNG. Face left and sword beam the two bottom jellies as you move left, and then change your momentum to angle down left to collect the key. While you are holding angle down left, just as you are about to collect the key, tap A to charge a dash, and then transition to angle up right to get a short burst of speed. Assuming you didn't use any magic in the overworld, fire rod this jelly as you move up toward the door. There are several benefits to doing so. This helps avoid the jelly if it gets in your way. It boosts you towards the door. It avoids the lag from the jingle and the right door opening. And it can also prevent sprite despawn if you kill all three jellies at the same time while you enter the stairs. When you are in front of the door, use a slash to help shift your momentum toward the door. If you enter this room with no beams, walk left onto the ice and then press down left to start getting downward momentum. Face left and continue to hold as you fire rod the bottom jelly. This fire rod shot should take out the middle jelly as well. Move to the left wall and wait for the key to spawn. Then hold angle up right to move toward the locked door above. Press up left as you leave the ice to shift your momentum toward the door and exit cleanly. For no beams and bad RNG, do the same movement as before to collect the key, then dash right to the center of the room and then dash up toward the locked door. Hold left out of the door and dash turn down. Move left onto the switch when you are below the wall. Hold angle up right during the switch animation and walk up when you clear the left wall. Dash turn right when you are aligned with the doorway. Hold right out of the door to push the block. Start dashing as soon as it moves and then turn down. Hold up through the transition to enter the previous room. Hold up until you push the block, start dashing and then turn right. Hold right plus B to keep your sword charged as you move toward the pots. Begin holding angle down right when the glowing tip of your sword is even with the pots and then release your sword spin. Hold down as you release your spin and your momentum should carry you far enough to grab the bottom pot. Grab the pot and throw it up to align yourself with the doorway and avoid grabbing the top pot. This particular alignment helps prevent the penguins from knocking you out of your dash. Turn left and then dash out. Hold left out of the door until you push the block. Start dashing as soon as it moves and then turn up. 
Hold right until you clear the door, then walk right until you pass the jelly. Move angle upright along the wall, and then menu to bombs as you clear the crystal switch. This menu buffer helps with reading the jelly RNG. Face up and drop the bomb before you slash the crystal switch. By dropping the bomb before you hit the crystal switch, this can prevent you from trying to drop the bomb during the switch animation, but you can avoid that by hitting B and Y on the same frame. As you slash the crystal switch, begin holding right. Walk right to the wall, then move angle upright to the opening on the right side. As you move up past the blue crystal switch, you can read the RNG from the jellies on the top, if the top right jelly decides to move to the top right of the room, you're going to have a faster clear pathway. With this being said, you can drop the bomb earlier if that path is clear, but you still have to be aware of the left jelly moving to the right, so it can be risky. Make sure to hold up and slide along the sloped wall until you clear the right divider to avoid getting stuck. Walk left until you are between the divider and the orange block. Face down and throw the bomb. Align yourself with the orange block as the first bomb explodes. Then walk down onto the bottom half of the orange pegs before the second bomb explodes. You want to make sure that you're facing all the way right against the wall because as you drop down into the next room, that's going to align you perfectly with the left pot that you need to pick up. You do have to be aware of your bomb management for this room, especially if you want to do the optimal strat. Ideally, you want to have three bombs to be able to do the optimal strats through the next few rooms. If you are short a bomb, the pot on the bottom left side does contain one. If you only have two bombs, it is faster to beam or slash the crystal switch on the conveyor a few rooms ahead. With bad jelly RNG, do the same movement up to the second bomb placement. Drop the bomb when you are past the right part of the divider and then move up to slash or beam the jelly. Go back, grab the bomb, and then continue the room as before. Hold up and pick up the pot above you and move up as you throw it. The Stealpho spawns as soon as you are above the pot tile. Turn down and place the bomb on the pot tile and begin moving angle down left when you clear the barrier. Grab the bottom left pot and move down to the bottom wall. Turn up and throw the pot when the second Stalfos is covering the pot tile. Move right to align with the doorway and begin dashing when you see the three smoke clouds from the bomb explosion and face down to dash out. An alternate cue is when the skull of the bottom Stelphos touches the pile of bones beneath it, you can dash. When you enter the room, there are a few strats to choose from depending on which way the conveyor is moving. For the optimal strat, hold angle down right until you clear the spike. Depending on where the front jelly is at, you can take a slight step down and sword beam to the left to hit the key jelly. If the front jelly is in your way of the key jelly, you will need to sword beam twice. Once your beam is on the way to kill the key jelly, slightly move down and damage boost off of the spikes to the right. This will give you iframes to align link up with the top set of spikes. Hold an angle input to move into the spikes and align with them. Dash left, grabbing the key from the back jelly, and once you clear the last spike, cancel your dash with an angle down left input. At this point, the conveyor may change directions, so you need to either move down slightly below the last spike before holding angle down right, or hold angle down left to get below the spike if the conveyor is moving left, and enter the door cleanly. If the conveyor is moving left, you will need to shimmy link around and below the spike and sword beam twice if the front jelly is in your way. Walk left, slightly move up above the spike, then below the next spike as you start your dash left. Use the same movement as before through the rest of the room. If you do not have sword beams in this room, the best option is to walk around the spikes and make your way to the key jelly. The jelly movement and electric attacks are very unpredictable. Once the key falls, start your dash left and make your way out of the room as before. By any chance, if you were short bombs in the jelly bombable floor room and you did not do the double bomb for the switch, you will need to hit the switch here on the way out. There are a few different setup techniques for the Ice Palace bomb jump. The optimal way is holding left out of the door and dash turning right to place Link on the edge pixel or one pixel away from the edge. The reason for holding left out of the door is because it places Link one pixel below the top of the wall, which is where you need to be for the optimal strategy. The X coordinates are C60 and C61. After placing the bomb, move Link facing down to the Y coordinate 
of 837 or 838. This is a great spot to menu buffer to the hammer, as you can get consistent with timing the down movement into the pause such that you hit the Y coordinates without needing to adjust afterwards. If you do need to adjust, dash or sword buffers are a good technique. The visual cue for this is the top of Link's hat is either even with the thick black line below the doorway or one pixel below. If you are one pixel away from the edge of the pit, which is coordinate C61, then the visual cue for the top of Link's hat being one pixel below the black line will not work. The reason it is better to face down for the bomb jump is that Link will already be facing down for the hammer dash, reducing the inputs you have to worry about after the jump. Once Link is blasted over the gap and lands, hammer dash through the two pots and cancel your dash with an angle upright input when you are slightly below the floor switch. With this dash cancel movement, Link will hit the floor switch. Take a quick step down. This ensures you do not get hit by the fire bar. Start your dash and turn left to bonk into the wall which sends Link over the pit. Move right to pick up the pot, throw it and continue moving right until you pass the top corner of the pit. Hold angle upright until you are aligned with the next pot. After picking up the last pot and throwing it, hold angle upright toward the door, then snap into it cleanly. By any chance if you fall off the edge during this method, you will need to wait a second in the doorway before moving Link left out of it to ensure you will not be lined up with the top of the wall. The other technique is lining Link up with the left edge, but also the top of the wall. Moving Link down to the Y coordinate is the same visual cue with his hat, but this method only allows the 837 position to work. This technique is a little slower because it lines Link up with the right side of the pot, which means you will not be able to hammer dash down through the pots. It is possible to avoid the fire bar doing this strat, but it is not likely. You will need to wait for the fire bar cycle or take a hit. Hold up while the screen is transitioning. As soon as Link moves up, start your dash and turn right. This will keep Link on the grid and move him closer to the door. Once you are aligned with the middle of the staircase, cancel your dash with an up input to enter it cleanly. Slash your sword down immediately and continue to hold it for a charge. You can also slash left, but only if you don't have sword beams. Move left until Link is lined up with the second vertical tile line. Transition to angle down left until Link reaches the center of the group of four tiles shown here. Release your spin and the momentum will carry Link just below the second pen gator and the sword spin will hit all five. When the sword spin animation is occurring, you can hold right to ensure you are lined up with the middle of the exit door at the top. Start your dash to exit the room. Hold up and move toward the spike trap. When Link is about to get hit, continue to hold up and slash your sword. If timed right, this will prevent the spike trap from knocking Link backward. Continue to move up until Link is aligned with the left door, start your dash and then turn left to exit. Hold left out of the door until Link starts to slip on the ice. Continue holding left and hammer. Hold angle down left and hammer twice. Make sure to complete the entire hammer animation before hammering a second time. After the previous hammer animation is complete, hold angle up left and hammer again. Continue to hold angle up left after the hammer animation until Link is two tiles above the staircase. Once Link reaches this point, transition to a down input, then quickly slide your thumb to an angle down right input and slash your sword. This will get you into the staircase. Continue to hold angle down right to enter the stairs. Alternatively, after the last hammer, once Link is above the stairs, slide to angle down left to kill your momentum, then switch to angle down right and press A to start a dash. This strat loses about 30 frames, but is much more lenient than the timing for the sword slash. There is an optional method for this room, which is the stair clip. This saves about 20 frames over the old optimal strategy. By releasing a spin with diagonal momentum, it's possible to clip through the rail surrounding the stairs in the lonely fire bar room. Hold left out of the door, then slash your sword down twice. Slash left and hold your sword charge as you move left toward the stairs. You want your downward momentum to move Link just below the dark blue line beneath the fire bar. When Link fully clears the fire bar block, Begin holding angle down left and release the sword spin, aiming for the dark blue line at the bottom of the stairs. Cancel your dash at the wall with an angle up right input and then hold up to fall into the pit. Walk right and exit the room cleanly. Walk right and push the block into the pit. When the block begins to move, quickly transition to face down 
and then hold angle down right to drop in the pit. Facing down before dropping in the pit will make the next room faster and doesn't lose any time here. As soon as Link hits the floor, hammer the pot below you. Tap up, then quickly hold down. This will put Link about halfway into the block as he is pushing it downward. Right when the block is about to move, slide off of it with a quick right input, start your dash and turn down. If you do not move Link off of the block in time as it moves down, Link will get stuck in the block and the switch will hit multiple times. This can also result in the door permanently shutting. If this happens, you will need to go upstairs, fall down the ferry hole and make your way back for it to reset. Hold down out of the door until you clear the jelly. Move angle down left until you clear the corner of the wall. Move down to lift up the pot, grab the small magic jar and then pull the statue up until you can see one pixel of floor between the bottom of the statue and the platform. Move around the statue to lift up the second magic pot and hold angle down right until you clear the statue. Move down and hammer the peg and then lift up the big rock. At this point you want a menu to the fire rod. Throw the rock and then fall into the pit. If you only need one magic jar, you can elect to pull up the right statue until the bottom of the right ear is aligned with the black squiggle, or until you can see the white pixels of the pot platform. Move around the statue to the right, then hold angle down left, pushing the statue until you clear the wall. Cold Stare takes 8 fire rod shots to break his ice shield. You take damage in this fight by Cold Stare and Falling Ice that splits into 3 pieces. Cold Stare does 4 hearts of damage while the Falling Ice does 2 hearts of damage. When Link hits the floor, hold angle upright until you are aligned with the left part of the ice shell. Hold up and fire 8 shots of the fire rod. If you continue to hold up during the shots, Link will move closer and closer to Cold Stare allowing you to fire rod faster. With this method, it will allow you to break Cold Stare's ice shell before the first piece of falling ice can hit you. Time your fire rod shots when each one hits. Do not spam the Y button. For the optimal double poke strategy, after the ice shell is broken, hold angle up right and hold your sword out. The visual cue is the tip of Link's sword is aligned with the middle brick line. Once your sword is halfway charged, start to move down inside of Cold Stare. Release your sword spin when Link's feet are below Cold Stare. After hitting him, slash right and hold your sword out. Move up toward Cold Stare, aligning the sword handle to the left of him. When the top of your sword hits him, you want to continue holding B and briefly hold the A button to dash. This will result in a poke dash, which will do full slash damage. If the dash is not timed well or not held for long enough, Link will drop his sword. Move toward Cold Stare and line up just like the first hit and poke dash him again. After the second poke dash, move angle down right slightly and release your spin. To ensure you have correct positioning on the spin release, you can menu buffer to mirror. This will result in a double spin, hitting and killing the boss. For the single poke dash strategy, the positioning for the spin release will be different. You want to line Link up further to the left of Cold Stare. A good position for Link is to have half of his body to the left of Cold Stare and his feet beneath him. This will result in knocking him further to the right. Line up the poke dash as before, and after hitting him, hold angle down right to position Link for a double spin. After releasing your spin, you can elect to menu buffer to the mirror to ensure you have good placement. Out of the menu, slash up to finish him off. The six slash method can be a little tricky just because of the falling ice and depending on where Cold Stare is bouncing off of the wall. The strategy can be very inconsistent at times, but is relatively easy to learn. Start off the same as the single poke strategy, including the spin release location. Move up to the left of Cold Stare near the top of the wall. Begin slashing Cold Stare into the top right corner, keeping all three puffs together between each slash. You want to move left, then back right to reposition yourself and create space from Cold Stare. Repositioning Link during these hits can help to avoid damage from the falling ice and Cold Stare. If Cold Stare is killed at the top of the screen, Catch the crystal with the shadow covering Link's eyes. If Cold Stare is killed at the bottom of the screen, catch the crystal with the shadow at Link's feet. This will result in a faster start to the crystal cutscene.